Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Karima Medina Bilal. And I happen to be Instructor Benjamin Bilal. And we are here with you on another installment of The Bilal Perspective. Think we could say that together? Yeah. The, the Bilal, Bilal Perspective. Perspective. <laughs> Seems intriguing. It does. It does. It definitely has a ring of intrigue so to it. What do we have for our folks today? Well, we're going to follow up on that very hot topic we had in our previous broadcast of abortion. We're going to take it to a different level. So the title of this presentation is Contraception. <laughs> Whose responsibility is it? I noticed when I did my head that way, I said, whose responsibility is it? She had that thing in her neck. I did. I a lot that of women was... have. You got to be careful, brothers. I think I saw some brothers out there scurrying. <laughs> that Don't was... be afraid. This is going to be good for you. <laughs> this That was called the cobra neck. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Whose responsibility is it? And we're going to answer the, the, these three these questions. What is the effect of an unwanted and unplanned pregnancy on the relationship? And what is the effect of abortion on uh, the relationship when the woman wants it, the man doesn't? Or I'm gonna frame that differently. The mother wants it, the father doesn't. Or conversely, the father wants an abortion, the mother doesn't. Now, you see how very interesting that can be? Very, very interesting. And I'm going to say this at the outset so that there is no ambiguity. There is no misunderstanding as to where we're coming from in this Bilal perspective. We're speaking, yes, to Muslims, but we're also speaking to people of the Christian faith, the Jewish faith. And believe it or not, what we're about to say is even going to be good for those who profess no religion at all. And I'm basing that on a Quranic uh, group of words where Allah speaks about the Quran itself being hudan, which means guidance for al mutaqin And uh, that means the possessors of what is called a taqwa. Most of you may have not heard of that term. Many Muslims don't know what taqwa is in the Quran. We'll break it down. Well, taqwa simply means uh, people who regard what should be regarded. See, now that's everybody because even infants will do that. Once they touch a hot stove or something and then they, you know, they know the feeling of that. When they come back in contact with that same scenario, they don't want that same experience. So taqwa in the two-year-old will say, don't do that again. All right. So you don't have to be making prayers and spiritual and uh, all of these other things that we call Religious, you don't have to be doing all of that. Taqwa is an innate quality within each and every human being. And it simply means to pay attention and to be cautious of the things that you do, because everything that you do, especially the major things, have repercussions. Be outcomes. mindful. Be mindful yes. of what you do and be aware of the fact that there is always, you're always, your conduct, is always being monitored for a quant quantitured for a quantitured <laughs> shush <laughs> monitored monitored yeah, to daddy. Shush. monitored for quality control and training purposes. Yeah, so you those of you who listened to me in the past know that I am working on a project called Merge Don't Marry, and the first installment of that is select your spouse select your uh select your spouse select your soulmate there you go lord help me select your soulmate <laughs> and so the 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 current climate suggests and it, it not only suggests it makes people urges people the whole society reinforces you can meet somebody for the first time and based upon what they look like, and this isn't even somebody that you've met in person. This is online. Based upon that, you meet with that person and you can go ahead and have a sexual encounter. And you don't have to worry about that because you're free. You're, you're not, 
Nobody tells you what to do with your body. We're here to remind you that actions have consequences. Frequently undesired or unexpected consequences. Pregnancy is one of them. The next time I'll talk to you about disease, that's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother conversation. And, and, and in here, I want to touch on choosing your partner carefully. I want to touch on when you meet someone, you should have a discussion about whether or not you want to have a family. If you do have children, how will the child, that you, uh, do you want to have another child to fit in and, and expand that family constellation? That's a discussion you have before. So in, in, in essence, the true contraception is not making a baby you don't want and taking the actions to prevent a pregnancy that you haven't planned and that you don't want. It'll save you all kinds of grief. And in that, you may have heard from the last broadcast, the clip from the video where they were speaking about marriage and having sex outside of marriage. When I say merge, don't marry, I am specifically referring to marrying by American law or marrying by the legal system of whatever country you're in. I make that point for two reasons. Number one, the marriage ceremony that you do legally registers you with the government and makes you subject to all the rules that the government has installed. I say you commit and you have a commitment service and you a commitment ceremony and you have your whatever your religious affiliation is married by that means and do what the Quran advises, which is that you execute, says reduce, Quran tells us reduce all future agreements to writing. And in the Quran is the guidance for what do you do if you decide you wish to divorce? What do you do if a person dies? What are the rights of survivorship? What are the rights of inheritance, et cetera, et cetera? Surat al-Baqarah goes into this with great, great detail. And so you take your understanding and you reduce it to a written legal contract, which you have notarized, and it is therefore legally enforceable. And should there be disagreement in the future on whatever the issue might be, it's right there for you to refer to. It's not he said, she said. It's not the, will you, uh, do you agree to honor, love, honor, obey, and cherish until death do you part? That's a verbal thing. You made a, a statement in front of people and you can still do that. So I want to make a distinction between marriage and wedding. Wedding is a ceremony. Marriage is the ongoing relationship. And it should be a contractual relationship. So I'll go more into that later. And then again, how do you judge commitment? Since I've said you should get into a committed relationship, how do you gauge how committed somebody is or is not? So this is what we're going to talk to today. That sounds like a whole bunch, doesn't it? Yeah, but they need to hear it. But they need to hear it. it <laughs> I'm needs listening. To. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. What is the effect of an unplanned pregnancy on the relationship? Now, there's two different reactions. There is surprise. There is alarm. There is happiness. There is, oh, Lord, have mercy on me. I feel like the world is descended upon you. But either way you go, it's going to affect the relationship between the two parties. And how is this? And there is that one response that we don't want any of you to have to experience as brothers. 
what am I going to tell my wife? <laughs> oh. You don't want that one. Those are the ones I said in the beginning. We're really not talking to you right now. <laughs> or, or what am I going to tell my husband? Oh, oh. It goes both ways. Ouch. Or who is the daddy? Oh, boy. You see, th this is why I, I mm. draw a distinction between commitment and marriage. Perfect. Beautiful. A person can be married and not committed to the relationship. That's how adultery, fornication occurs. Hmm? And the law cannot enforce that. They can punish you, but who, how would the law even know that you're doing it? It only comes out or comes to life when you're citing a reason for the divorce. You can say adultery, right? Right? But it's the commitment between the two parties that prevents that. And the government cannot enforce, the government cannot instill in a person a commitment that they do not feel. Right. If that were the case, there would be no child support enforcement divisions. There just wouldn't be. There would be no divorce court. If people were committed to the relationship, if people were committed to family life, and doing what the God of your religion, whether you're Catholic or whether you're Protestant or whether you're whatever your religious affiliation is, I'm confident that there is no religion that says a father should not support his family. Do you know of one? I don't. No, I do not, no. So, and, and the government can't do that. And what happens is when a an unintended consequence Right. Remember, I spoke about well in the previous broadcast, I spoke about the law of expediency and the law of expediency is that urge to go ahead and do something in the spur of the moment, because it appears to be the simplest thing to do or it appears to be the most convenient thing to do. And so you do it in that moment and you say, well, I'll deal with whatever comes of it later. However, the corollary to the law of expediency is the law of unintended consequences of which unplanned pregnancies are definitely one. So scenario A, a person uh, is in a, a committed relationship and uh, a pregnancy, an unintended pregnancy, unplanned pregnancy occurs. So in, 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 in the best of scenarios, the people say, well, this is God's will, because as I said earlier, it's actually rather difficult to get pregnant. And if a person does, if the woman does get pregnant, it is because Allah decreed it or the God of your calling decreed it because life and death are the province of the creator. Now, there will be in, in either event uh, a concern about consequences. <laughs> Financial, more than anything, financial consequences. I think that's the thing that works most people is how are we going to pay for this? That's the reason why most people divorce, isn't it? I think that's the number one reason for yeah. finance. And the second one would be adultery. Mm. The second one is adultery. Uh, and so this is why you have to have the discussion. Married or not married, if you're having sex with someone, you have to have the discussion. Now, let me let me go back. There's so many different facets to this, and I'm not necessarily um, bringing them out in sequential order. So I do ask your uh, indulgence on that. But let's go back to the first question. Contraception, whose responsibility is it? Now, all of you ladies that were boohoo whining and crying, about your right to choose and how it's your body and your choice, I would argue that the ultimate responsibility for contraception, that is to plan a pregnancy or not, or prevent a pregnancy, not extinguish a pregnancy, <laughs> But plan one or not, prevent one or not, use something, do something, assure 
that you've done what you can to prevent a pregnancy, that's on you. That's on us. Why is it? Because you're the one who's going to have to have the baby. Or not. Consequences. The consequences fall largely, and I should say even then, the physical consequences fall on the female. The responsibility consequences fall on the man. What do you say, Benjamin? I say, what do you say? You know, I was thinking about that word consequence, and it, it means with sequence. So if we're not really paying attention to the sequencing of things, like what happens when we enter into this relationship, uh, what happens if we enter to, into a relationship that has no real commitment and then she gets pregnant, right? So it goes back to taqwa. The sequence is that you have to first be regardful of those things that deserve regard. Because everything, whether you intend it to happen or not is going to have some repercussions as you mentioned in the first program they have consequence yeah now here's a very interesting thing let me shift back to uh select your soulmate after you've met the person things look good uh you you say this person male whoever is the male or the female in this situation you both decide this This could go someplace. We could really do something together. You must have the conversation about what do you, A, do you have children? <laughs> That's an interesting thing. I, I got to spend a second or two on this. You must determine whether the person you're thinking of hooking up with has children already. And this is a wonderful, wonderful thing for you if you're observant and mindful. Why do I say that? If the person has children, you would want to know how many. And if he has, if the person, male or female now, if either male or female person has children, how many do they have and what is their relationship with those children? Were the children taken away by Child Protective Services for neglect or abuse or something else? Yeah, that's a big one. That right there, that's that major. should be ring, 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 fire alarm. That's a big one there. Second one, um, what is the relation? What what relationship do they have with the children? It's, it's very interesting to meet somebody and they've got multiple children by multiple partners. This could be babies, daddies, or babies, mommies. How, what's your relationship with them? Do you see them? Is it enough for you, the male, to say, well, I pay child support and that's my the limit of my obligation with them? No, I would respectfully disagree. Your relationship and your obligation to them is not only to provide for them financially, but to provide for them emotionally, developmentally, to guide them, to instruct them. That's what being a parent is. If it's a female and she's the one who has custody of the children, spend some time with her, with her children. Look at the children. What are their ages? Are they close in age with different fathers? Well, that tells you something about mm. how committed she is to a relationship and what kind of care. And this is male or female, but I'm speaking from a female perspective. I I think it's, and this is a bias. I know I'm going to get, get some smoke from this, but there are many situations in which it's a single parent household. I would venture to say that in that single parent household, if the mother is intact and the mother's on her job, she nurtures, she protects, she instructs, and difficult as it is, I've been a single parent, I know. She's, you can look at the children and see, ooh, these children are respectful. These children are well-dressed and well-cared for. 
Watch the interaction between the children. Do they curse? Do they swear? Do they speak only street language and they don't know how to make proper sentences? I can tell you a, a slight anecdote. I made the decision to ask this brother to marry me based upon my observation of him and his children. I babysat his children for him when he was, he, he was at that time uh, uh, officiating at a ceremony and I kept his children for him. And so I had about four or five, six hours intensively to listen to the children to interact with the children. To, and at this point, mind you, I was just being a good Samaritan. I had no true developed interest in him as a partner. I didn't know him that well, but I saw an opportunity to get some blessings, right? Person needed a babysitter. I stepped in. And this was 20 years ago, this was 20 by the way. Years ago. Yeah. The children, his children and my children made the decision that we should marry. Ooh, yeah. So there's a lot, You so much. I know some people, I, I remember watching the movie, Mrs. Doubtfire, and uh, the, the boyfriend of the mother uh, was sitting having a drink and somebody said, hey, yeah, I see you with this, this lady now. Yeah, she's got a lot of baggage. <laughs> and he didn't say, no, they're not baggage, they're wonderful children. Mm -hmm. So you can learn a tremendous amount about that. Do not, as you're searching for your soulmate, do not just out of the gate dismiss someone who has children from a previous relationship. Next thing that you'll learn if there's children from a previous relationship, what is the relationship of that person with the other uh, parent, with the absent parent? Is it going to be a lot of baby mama drama? Is there going to be situations where uh, the female's ex is going to flip out when he sees her with another man? Because maybe the relationship isn't finished. Maybe they're divorced, but it's not finished emotionally. Oh, there's so much treasure trove, mother load, no pun intended, that you can <laughs> find from things like that. So I suggest to you, as you're searching for your soulmate, make sure you choose your partner wisely. And in that, make one of the biggest criteria, are they parent material? Great question. Are they parent material? And if they're not, then you might seriously want to think long and hard, no pun intended, about whether or not <laughs> this this is going to be brought, this is going to be laced with so many different puns, whether or not you want to get involved with them because it can happen. And now, now here's, here's a very important thing. Remember I spoke earlier about confirming contraception, confirming that the person is, they'll tell you, oh, I've had a tubal ligation. Uh, I've had my tubes tied. Uh, I've had a vasectomy or... Uh, my personal favorite, the doctor told me that I couldn't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. This is a license for the female to just not worry about it, not have to use anything. I can tell you as someone in the medical field, a medical professional who's practiced GYN, gynecology, women's health, family planning, dot, dot, for 45 years, confirm that Doctor told you you couldn't have any children. Well, how was that confirmed? Or uh, uh, did you have some kind of a medical test that said your tubes are horribly damaged and you can't possibly do that? If you did want to get pregnant, you would need to have in vitro fertilization. Have you had a hysterectomy? Were you, do you said I can't get pregnant, meaning you advise not to get pregnant, but you're still it's still possible. Oh, I've had fibroids, or I have. Uh, sickle cell disease, or have some other kind of a situation that would make pregnancy difficult. <clears throat> These are not conversations you have in the bedroom. You don't make vaginal decisions. 
You don't make life-altering discussions with your private parts. They frequently will say things they can't back up. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? They will write checks that you will have to cash. So that's not something that you take lightly, especially if it means that you're going to suffer health consequences. This is another argument that the, the libtards uh, put out. Let me not say that. That the people who are vigorously in support of abortion say, well, you know, if it's the mother's, if it means the mother's health. Yes, it is possible that in the course of pregnancy, conditions may develop that put the mother's life at risk and sufficiently at risk such that continuing the pregnancy is inadvisable. That can happen small majority of the time. Hmm? So you, you want to know going in whether or not, well, I, I, I shouldn't, it's, it's my mother's life. No, if it does not specifically mean that the mother's health is compromised by continuing the pregnancy, then yeah, you go ahead and you continue the pregnancy. And don't let doctors try to, remember, healthcare is an industry. Medicine is a business. And when you go into the hospital, when surgeries are done, when procedures are performed, they make money. They make money. There is such a thing as organ harvesting. Oh boy. There is such a thing as using what they call, mm. in, in delicate medical terminology, the products of conception can be sold for research purposes. So you take all of that into account. Mm? This is a human life we are speaking about. So if it turns out that the person says, well, I, I've, I've had my tubes tied. Okay, there's a scar. <laughs> or just let me tell you, I, I'm, I advise my sons and my daughters, if they tell you something like that, get the records. It's such a simple thing. Now, here's another uh, discussion we will have. What kinds of medical clearance should you request before you marry somebody. Oh, that's not romantic at all. It's not romantic to get herpes. It's not romantic to get HIV. It's not romantic to get warts. Hmm. So there's lots of things that you need to know before you have sex with someone. So, and again, this is not a discussion that you have when either of you are aroused, because then you're not thinking with this head huh? and you're not speaking with this mouth. Mm. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, what is the effect of abortion when the man wants to keep the baby and the woman doesn't. Let's say it's a committed relationship, but the pregnancy was unplanned. Man says, I really would love to have a baby. I'm, I can do it. Baby, I'm, I'm going to stick by you. I'm gonna... She says, I don't want to. I've got my career to think of. What's the effect? So from a man's perspective, what do you think about that? Well, I think there's been so much hype uh, around the woman's right to choose and uh, the, the thinking that that includes whether to abort a life in the womb. I don't think the woman's right to choose should be included as or in that kind of discussion. The abortion means that a life is forming in the womb of that mother that is the contribution of both a male and a female, not just a female. So for us to make a choice based on just one of the genders responsible, I think is inadequate and I think is irresponsible. And I think it cheats the man out of his 
uh, decision-making rights. If he helped to make the baby, then he should have some kind of input into the discussion as to what we want to do going further into the future with this life to be, or this life, but this baby to be, this child to be, whatever is the correct uh, 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 you know, vernacular for that. So no, it's, it's not just her choice, in my humble opinion. It should be a choice that is agreed upon by both. And if you started out on the good foot, as Kareem and I are suggesting, by having these discussions, and we're talking about whether you're married or not, it doesn't matter. You know, pregnancy doesn't wait until you're married <laughs> to show itself. That's right. So it's you could be married but not have had these discussions. Well, what do we want to do? What do I want to do with my future? What do I want to do in the next two to three years? Can I put something off for a year to have this baby? These are discussions that, you know, couples who are committed couples should be having. Now, if you're not committed, you're really not as relevant, actually, uh, as the, I hate to say, street folks who just like to bump and grind and hardly know the girl's name after the club date is over. All right, now she gets pregnant. That's a whole nother scenario we're talking about. She doesn't even know his family. He doesn't even know where she comes. See, from. that's fornication. That's my point. We're that's, not here to advocate. We're not that advocating no. fornication at all. No, there's a reason it's called fornication. It's from the word of uh, two words, fornix and furnace. <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you deal with that. No, well, uh, it, it certainly do, does get hot. Where the discussions do definitely get very, very heated when things uh, are, are discovered and you recognize now you're in a situation you didn't plan for. I think that from the female perspective, it is really unjust to cut the man out of the discussion about what to do about the pregnancy. Because number one, if you didn't think he was good parent material, why are you doing the things, a good father, material, why are you doing the things with him that to get a baby? Because you want to. In that situation, you should use something to prevent it. it it's, it's so interesting. It's so interesting how the woman will say, I'm pregnant. You can't tell me what to do. But after the baby's born, you got to pay child support. Yeah, now you want to tell me what to do. Now you want to tell me what to do. <laughs> oh, you, want, you want to tell me what to do. I couldn't tell you what to do. But now you want to tell me what to do. So that's, 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 that's not right. And now here's another thing that I think really gets lost in a discussion. When you have a child, this is the continuation of your bloodline. Now that I'm a senior, we're both senior. Well, he's a young man, but yeah, now that I'm a senior. You know, 10, 20 years for me to be a senior, but I, I get your point. Now that I'm a senior, it's important to me who my successors are. I have a sense of permanence. I have a sense of continuation that after I pass, my mother, all the females, my daughter is the continuation of all the females in my line. My son is a continuation of all the males in my line. This is bloodline. Now, people of today's generation, in the me generation, are generally so self-absorbed that they don't know who their grandparents are. It, it's, it's the most painful thing I've read online in the uh, AARP magazine, and also on other posts where you have seniors who are saying, my grandchildren, they live in another state. My children live in another state and I haven't seen my grandchildren for five, 10 years. Or uh, my children, uh, they don't like me and they don't send, they use the children as a weapon so that they don't come and see me. And they feel so lonely. I think that is the height, absolute highest form of uh, ingratitude. And also, it's got to be a real mental illness to see yourself so disconnected 
from your past that you cannot see what you do with your with your with your successors, with your children, with your seed, that you can't see how not having them or killing them or not raising them properly, it, your line dies with you. There are no more after you. And that's especially important for the so-called African-American people, because if you look at the Native Americans, they don't have that issue. If you look at the people of China, over how many, a billion people in China, something like that? One out of every four people on the face in of the planet. earth is China. They don't have that issue. They they have respect for the wombs that bore them. I have to qualify that. They did have a policy because things were, population was exploding and they weren't sure I don't know what their reasoning were, but they did have a, a two-child limit. Yeah, well, let's, let's differentiate between the people and the government. And the government. The government had a two The government had. For sure. and, and now they've got a problem with uh, no population growth. But I digress. So, so mm -hmm. again, if you're in, if you're, when you seek a spouse, it's important to seek someone who has the same goals and objectives as you do. And it's important to have that conversation about when you have children. And if such a thing happens, what would you do? How would you feel? Now, I want to say, now that was the woman, the man wants it, the woman doesn't. Now what happens when the woman wants it and the man doesn't? It can happen. I can remember when I was doing working in a teen pregnancy program, You'd have a 16-year-old or 18-year-old, uh, and she wanted to keep the baby and was absolutely emotionally distraught that the young man did not want. And her mother, her mother, did not want the daughter to have uh, the child. And it was at that point, the child comes to us. It's like, well, what do I do? Because I don't want to do this. This is, this is very, very bad. And what that does is it encourages the child, not the child, the the mother of the child to hide the pregnancy. Oh boy, that's a big one. Until, the, until it's inescapable and undeniable, at which point options are limited in the event that they force the child to have a procedure. So, you know, that, that could take, and then I, I wonder at the grandmother, the, 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 the pregnant child's grandmother, I wonder at her, this is her grandchild that she's talking about killing. I have to say this. In my day, mind you, I'm 70, I'm going to be 72 next month. We always would have- Young woman. <laughs> thank you. So sweet. Uh, we had situations where uh, a person who was part of our circle up in, in New York would kind of disappear for a, a couple of months and then come back. She'd be pregnant, she'd disappear, she'd come back. And it, it the way it went was the relatives down south kept the child until the mother, who was up north, established herself, at which point she would come back down south, get the child, and raise it. We didn't know about foster care, uh, giving children up for adoption. That wasn't part of the matrix. You had family, and family helped you out until, and of course, the family members went after the brother and said, you're going to do right by this. Mm -hmm. You're going to do right by her. Yeah. But now, families are fractured. <clears throat> Up through 1950s, most African-American families were intact, two-parent households. Crime was down. Of course, there's a lot of other things going on societally that reinforced that unity. But now here we are in an age where contraception is plentiful and uh, the Black family's fractured. We have many more single family households and the abortion rate, we have the highest abortion rate of any other ethnic group. So things are definitely kind of weird. So again, there's so much to say. Uh, I want to I want to address this other point, and then we can uh, again in the in the comments. I want you definitely to raise questions, and I'll definitely answer them. Uh, if you want to contact me, this is merge don't marry it at yahoo. Excuse me, 
merge don't marry at gmail.com. Merge, M E R G E, don't marry, no apostrophe, at gmail.com. Please send your comments. I definitely want to hear them. Send your questions. The last thing that I will put, which speaks, that I'll, that I'll address, that speaks to um, selecting your soulmate. We talk about commitment, commitment to the relationship. How do you judge commitment? How do you judge commitment? I say you judge commitment by time. Over time, with observation, you will see how this person lives their life. Male or female, mind you, I'm speaking about males and females. Not just an indictment of the men. Males and females. How does this person honor their obligations? Time will tell you. Mm. There are, there are really soft ways you can do that. If the per, here's, here's one, one of my personal favorites, and it's very easy to um, ascertain. Supposing you have a, an agreement with this person to link up and do something. And number one, you ask that person, oh, when would you like to get together? And the person says, I'll get back to you. That's one thing if they're on the phone with a call and they say, I'm going to call you back five minutes, they call you back. So speaking now about soft ways that you can uh, ascertain whether or not the person is uh, true to their commitments, right? So presume that you have, uh, uh, you make an appointment, even that you suggest that they get together again, that you get together again, and the person is vague, about it, uh, two things then, either they don't want to meet with you again, uh, or these are people that are not judicious with time. You say, what time would you like to get together? Uh, I don't know. What do you mean that you don't know? Uh, you want to go morning? You want to go afternoon? You want to go evening? Well, well, okay, so you finally go through all that, which is frustrating and which is revealing in and of itself. Now, now you say, well, I'm going to get together with you at seven o'clock. And then seven o'clock comes and you don't see the person. <laughs> seven o'clock comes, you don't hear from the person. You don't get a text. You don't get a call. To me, this is big red flag. This is big red blinking flag. This is a person that doesn't honor simple commitments. Now, there are some of us who listen to a lot of music that makes, I call it victim music. Oh, why doesn't he call? I've been sitting all day by the telephone waiting for you to call. No. If you tell me you're going to do something and you don't do it, uh, I will give you 15 minutes grace for the strange thing. But if I don't hear from you, I'm going on with my life. And you get like one time to do that. And if you still continue to do that, I say, this is a pattern. Mm. Now, when a person shows you who they are, believe them. Oh, you think, and, and do not be so needy and so careless with your time that you're willing to let this person repeat this pattern. It's, I, I, this, this reminds me. This is the uh, the woman who wants to know, do you love me? If you have to ask, <laughs> you have to ask, you know, by the person's actions and tell you anything, but you know, by the person's actions, you're with somebody and they say, listen, I really want to see you again. Matter of fact, I don't want to leave you. What time tomorrow can we can, can I come get you for breakfast? Can I pick you up? You know what I'm saying? There's now, a, you know, there's another underlying issue here, and that is what are you considering to be love? Why do you want to see me again? What happened the last time you saw me that makes you want to see me so much again and again and again? See, here's where we get into the different levels of love, the different levels of relationship. And uh, those of us who read the Quran should be aware of this also, that even in the Arabic language, there are 14 different words for love. 
there's that love on the passion level that we were talking about earlier, Lust. right? The ahwa, you know, the desire, the deep rooted, deep seated desire. But the highest level of love in the Arabic language is a word called uh, uh, wudud. Yeah. Wudud. W-U-D-U-D? Yeah. W-A-D-U-D. Yeah. Wadud or wudud? I'm forgetting, but <laughs> I'll have it in the description below. <laughs> we'll put it in as a, as a banner. I've only used it once, and that was when I was performing a wedding ceremony. <laughs> but speaking of wedding ceremony, the word wed comes from the word wadud. And wadud also gave us the English word wood. Now, what does all of that have to do with each other? Because wood is one of the longest lasting materials that you can use to build a structure. Wood. So I would guess that the ancient people understood that about wood, how it stood the test of time and so forth. And they, they put that into the word for wedding, for being together and having that relationship withstand the test of time. So, you know, is this a, um, uh, just going to be a sometimes a relationship or is this you just waiting for the next woman who looks better, who cooks better, who dresses better than the one you're with now? And then you're going to dismiss that one and then move on to the next one. Well, what kind of love is that? That's when you get into the differences between what you call lust, you know, the pat. And, and it's not nothing wrong to have a lust for the person that you're married to. Amen. Well, you know, nothing wrong. You mean, you're better. <laughs> but the point is, is that if that's your if that's your ceiling, <laughs> you can't go any higher than that in the relationship. That's going to be a problem because there's going to always be somebody who looks better, who cooks better, who dresses that's better, right. who's right. got a, a prettier voice, a softer voice. Mm -hmm. You know, you like to hear her talking in this phone, or you like to hear him. Yeah, you know, you know, I don't. You like to hear that in your ear. But that's not going to sustain the relationship. No. So that's that's another discussion that we yeah. will have is 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 it really love? And not like that, but what's love got to do with it? Hey, I think somebody sang a song. Yeah, like, well actually that, that was, yes. Yeah. yeah, I remember hearing that from somebody else. And 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 is and love. They also said that there ain't no romance without finance. Yeah, no. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh. Yes. We we we're gonna do a video yeah. on the music. Oh, and how goodness. music influences people's decisions and feelings about relationships. Yeah, music is their religion. And 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 they they've managed. Well, we'll get started. But anyway, consistency, right? If you are with someone, uh, and this is whether you're searching for the mate or whether or not you are actually in the relationship. When you think about having a baby, having a baby is a permanent thing. If you have, once you have a baby with somebody, you are linked with that person forever. That person is always going to be the father of your child. He's always going to be the person that got you pregnant. He, she's always going to be the one that you had a baby with. Even if, if Allah calls the child home, you are still bound by the relationship that that child brought to you. You're bound by that. So you want to know how consistent a person is in their everyday doings. You, you you don't wanna be someone who's a sometime mother or a sometime father. It's the stakes are too high for that. What are their qualifications for being a parent? Hmm. This is very important. Especially if they've never been one. Especially if they've never been one. Uh, I think it, it now, and that's, that's an interesting concept because mm -hmm. you know, your first time parent, you're usually green as corn and don't know any and don't know anything about what's really involved until you do it. But isn't that the important thing about commitment? Because that's important. It's a it's a learning it's a relationship. It's a it's a there's a learning curve, and you're going to go through it together. It's a process. It's yeah. the process. But if you're not willing to sit down and learn and observe and and calculate and 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 uh, correct the mistakes that you run into, there's the end of that relationship. Well, it's an in-flight correction thing at that. Yeah, because. I mean, really, even after you've had the first child, I don't care how many children you have, each pregnancy is different. So there's going to be that stability. Is this, per how stable is this person in their, not only their commitment, but in their responsibilities? You really need that when you're going to have a child. 
yeah, it, it, things happen. You can have a job now and not have a job next week. We understand that. But there are certain traits that assure you that no matter what, no matter what, these children are going to have a place to stay. These children are going to have food to eat. These children are going to have clothes on their body. These children are going to be taken care of. If I've got to work four jobs, I don't care. I will do it. That's the commitment that, that Allah put in me as a mother. And I, I can I could I could bore you to tears. Well, I won't say I bore you, I could bring you to tears about some of what I've had to go through in the course of raising children. There are eleven children. Eleven? Your mm -hmm. eight and my three. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's eleven between us. We got stories. <laughs> we got stories. But we did it. And we're still doing it. And all of the children that we have. May Allah reward the two that are returned with paradise. Two of them are returned to paradise. But the ones that are here, they are wonderful human beings whom we like and who like us. That's huge. That's important. You love your children, but you don't always like them. And you love them and they don't always like you. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> how about that? Or they love you and you really don't care about them. And you dear. Oh, it, man. There's so can, many dynamics. So many dynamics. So, many, yeah. so these are all the things... Mm. And and then the, the other, the last thing, uh, I'll say that, and then we can pause this and go around, is that how balanced is the person, right? Um, I like a person, one of the things that I really enjoy about this brother here is he's very balanced in his opinions of things and in his um, approach to things. It's, it's not radical except in his love of Allah, but even that is not radical in the sense that we've come to understand radical religion. But the perspective is balanced. The desire is to be the best human being we can be. Right? Do they match you? Is is I'm a person who's rather uh, uh, compulsive and uh, I'm much more adrenaline in my way of doing things. This brother's no. And so there is a balance in the two things in the relationship, which we can bring to bear on family life. See, where I might come with fang and claw, or when I might come with fire, he comes with water and peace. So it works out just fine. There's a lot of things that I could say, a lot of things we could say, have said, which you may or may not agree with. What I can tell you is that the intention was to please Allah was that the intention was to do good, to say things that will cause you to think. You may or may not agree with us, and we hope that you'll share what you think about what we think in the comments. I would leave you with this, and I, I, I really get a kick out of this. Uh, I recently come to study gun safety. And one of the things that you learn about gun safety is that you never draw a weapon that you don't intend to use. You never point your weapon at anything that you do not intend to destroy. You do not shoot anything you do not intend to kill. And you are responsible for every round bullet that you fire, wherever it may land intentionally or unintentionally. And you may ask, why am I bringing that up in the context of pregnancy? Because you should never expose your private parts, draw your weapon, uh, unless you intend to use it. So ladies, you don't go around tempting and displaying your private parts Otherwise, wow. otherwise known as charms. Your back charms. In, back in the day. Your charms. Uh, uh, in front of people that you do not intend to share them with. Hmm? You don't point <laughs> <laughs> men folk. Pun intended. <laughs> Pun intended. You don't point your Fire weapon. Fire off rounds. You, you, don't, you don't let off uh, unless you intend to strike the target. You don't shoot unless you intend to actually reach 
the target. You're having sex, you don't ejaculate into something you don't intend to impregnate, if I might be uh, more direct. Mm -hmm. And you are responsible for where your seed goes. You're responsible for what comes in contact with your eggs, ladies. <laughs> so yes, I hope I have stirred up some controversy. I'm sure you have. <laughs> You'll be hearing about them in the, in, in, in the, in the comments. Boxes, but... In the comments. So uh, we're bringing this particular segment. And, and folks, feel free. Now, don't, don't be so shy that you won't comment. We love your comments. We, love and we, your will, we will comment back. We will we, respond. We definitely will respond. So and this is an important topic for you to begin sharing. I mean, use a pseudonym if you don't want people to know your name. But... Please respond. It's very important to the algorithm, first and foremost. It's uh, also important uh, for us to know whether we should continue with this series. As a matter of fact, you can even put yes in the box to say, I want to see more of this kind of content. Yes, comment. Yes. We want this to go on for at least another year. You know, every week we throw you another video, throw you another video. We'll even take suggestions from you in terms of the things topics that, that we're discussing, hear. things that you want to hear us talk about. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, and, and mind you, we're not speaking just to Muslims. We're speaking to people of conscience. True humans. True humans. All over the planet. And they come in all colors. They come in all shapes, all sizes. All languages. All cultures. But you got to understand a little bit of English. You know, for English. us to be able to. English. <laughs> English, yeah, for us yes. to, be able to communicate with you. So so just just understand where we're, where we're coming from. What we <laughs> understand our intentions. And please, uh, for all the good that has come out of this, please know that the credit and the praise goes to Allah. Alhamdulillah. And for any mistakes that were made, any mistakes, any misstatements, uh, overreach, all that is my error. Bring it to my attention, and I will ask Allah for us forgiveness. Yes, Allah. So, with all that said, I wish you the best. I wish you a commit. I wish that you will find your soulmate. And that you'll let me know what you think about merging and not marrying any commitment ceremonies and what your spin on, your take is on uh, contraception, abortion, responsibility. Whose responsibility is it? Let me know what you think. And I'll be glad to meet you again uh, in the air. And this Karima Adina without Lord. Who are you? <laughs> Karima Medina Bilal signing off. All right. This is Instructor Benjamin Bilal co-signing. And uh, God willing, or inshallah, we will see you in the next episode. Salamun alaikum. Salamun alaikum.